Hi everyone, you're watching Express Photography and I'm Alistair Ben. In this week's video, I want to talk about the pros and cons of cropping in camera. So one of the big things about contemporary photography is that most of us use one of these, a digital camera, and this is my Nikon D850. Um, it has various aspect ratios that I can choose to crop in. I can either shoot full frame, a four by five, uh, or a one by one, um, and various other cropped ratios, like you know, mag uh, slightly zoomed in. I've also developed a hack which allows me to uh, uh, shoot in 16 by nine, uh, which is available in some of the new mirrorless Nikon cameras. But for me, I tend to put it in video mode and with the live preview on, uh, I can press the shutter button instead of the video record button. And that gives me a 16 by nine. If you want to try that, just make sure you set the exposure settings in photo mode because that is the settings that will be used, not the ones in the video. Uh, now, to that aside, uh, why would we ever want to crop in camera? With the Nikon D850, it actually throws away the pixels. So instead of recording the full frame and showing you a square or a four by five, it actually crops it to that aspect ratio. I know that that's not true in some other brands, Canon, for example, uh, and even the Fuji that Adam Gibbs was using when he was over in Spain with me recently. It shows you a preview of the crop, but when you get it into Lightroom or your other editing software, it gives you all your pixels back. So for me, it's kind of curious that the Nikon does commit to cropping those pixels, but I don't care. And first of all, let's ask the question, well, why would I care? You know, why would I care if I'm committing to a crop? If I dig out my Hasselblad here, this is a six by six medium format film camera and I shoot in squares. It is a square aspect ratio camera. Uh, and if I want a three by two or a four by five, I don't have a lot of choice. It's one by one uh, aspect ratio on the back. Um, so when I scan my slides, I have lots and lots of squares. Sure, I guess I could crop into those, but part of the process of shooting film is that concept of getting it right in camera. And that is certainly a big part of why I shoot film still, even though I have other alternatives. Let's jump into my Lightroom catalog here because I think the impression that a lot of you are getting is that I never shoot three by two, I never shoot full frame, but that is not the case. I quite often do, it's just I have preferences for cropping or uh, arranging the composition in the field to the way that suits my choices at the time. So I've pulled together a couple of examples here uh, this is the first one. None of these have really been processed. Maybe the odd little bit of touching uh, contrast here and there. This is full frame on my Nikon D850. And we can see that it's a perfectly acceptable photograph. Uh, the, the, the sky um, was not particularly interesting. It was very gray and a bit overcast, but you know, it was, there was a little bit of pink light here and there. So what I've done with the full frame is contained the scene. That's everything I want. And I've zoomed in with my uh, 70 to uh, my 2470 to get the bit of the scene that I wanted to. Now, one of the big things that's worth talking about here is the power of an aspect ratio. What does an aspect ratio tell us? In this particular case, we have three units along and two high, which means we're emphasizing the width, but we're still showing two thirds of the height we're still showing plenty of height. So this is showing quite a lot of depth in the landscape and some expansiveness, but it doesn't feel super expansive. If we move to the next frame, this was cropped to three uh, to 16 by nine in camera. This feels more expansive. It just feels wider and more panoramic. And that is simply the aspect ratio doing what it's supposed to do. If we draw a line here, from uh, across the frame, we're forcing the viewer to come from corner to corner, whereas in the three by two version, it's, it's a more gentle drift across the frame. We're, we're more likely to go up and down rather than le from left to right. 
So we can already see, and I've discussed this quite a few times on the channel already, that aspect ratios have a massive impact on how we feel a photograph. Where, where do we want to look? Where do we want to go? I do love panoramic images. I've, I've mentioned already the 65 by 24 aspect ratio that the Fuji can do. And one of the clients who was just on the Scottish workshop with me here had a Hasselblad that also offers that X-Pan, which was a native Hasselblad format in camera. And I love it. So I, I wish I had uh, 65 by 24 uh, as a crop aspect ratio in my camera. But Going back to the video we made last week where we were talking about the power of a black and white preview, the aspect ratio we see on the back of the camera has a big impact on our engagement with the scene, how we feel about the scene and the choices that we're making at the time. Here is a black and white preview of a little cove where the waves were rushing in and then coming back down. This is a three by two aspect ratio and I believe this works. I love the energy in the top of the frame. I love how the right hand side of the frame, I've captured that water rushing down the, the cliffs there. But the impact of this area on the lower left is to help to frame that. I feel this band of luminosity here and that slight angle is helping to contain the center part of the frame. If I were to go in and start cropping this into a square or a four by five, I would be losing content that I feel is adding to the scene. And therefore I'm quite happy that I had it in three by two. In three by two. I did make other versions of these with vertical compositions in four by five um, because I wanted to emphasize other aspects of the scene. But when I first got there, this was my choice and I was very happy with three by two. I believe this one shows a really good example of why I like to crop in camera. This again, I started with three by two and when you're, when you're zooming in or you're composing your scene, what you zoom in either for width or height, that's all you can really do. So in this particular scene, I was composing for width. I wanted this amount of space on either side of this particularly cool little frozen puddle. Uh, juxtaposed against the waterfall here. Now there are various parts of this frame that I believe are not adding to the composition, in particular this triangular shadowy area up in the top, uh, top middle of the frame and there's a few little bits of rock infringing on the bottom there. Uh, so what I did was I thought okay that, that I'm very happy with the overall scene, I really think it's an interesting area to point a camera at but I went in with a three by two, uh, I'll get these aspect ratios right one of these days. I went in with a 16 by nine aspect ratio and I feel that I have managed to get rid of most of that triangle at the top. There's still a little bit which is easier to clone. I've got rid of all the foreground bits and bobs that were in the way. And I feel this is a far more compact photograph. And this was the last photograph I made of the scene because I felt I had got it. I'd, I'd felt I'd distilled the bigger picture down to exactly what it was I was wanting to be looking at. In the final example here, this was just um, the last day of the most recent workshop, actually, the last evening. And I found this little uh, cascade just rolling over the top of these red granite rocks. And as you can see from the video clip here, it was quite a long feature. They had lots of layers and I tried to make various shots of the layers and then just decided that a straight on view was going to show the bits that I was most interested in. These uh, fingers of rock here. And in particular, I really like these shadows on the top. Now I'd already decided that full frame was going to show more content than I wanted to show. So I'd already cropped into 16 by nine, but I felt that in the 16 by nine version, there was more stuff in it that I wanted. I didn't like this area on the left hand side and I really didn't like this area here on the right hand side, this sort of square blocky shadowy area. So I cropped it into a square and distilled it down into its bare parts. Now we've got rid of a lot of distractions. The world is a complicated place and that's probably one of the biggest challenges we have as landscape photographers is to go into a busy, complicated, angular and luminous landscape and find the bits that 
please us the most uh, aesthetically, harmoniously, or somehow speak to us in a, in, a, in a nice profound way. And the arrangement in camera of the bits that I am most interested in is a fundamental part of composing, exactly the same as it is with my old Hasselblad. You know, this is a prime lens, so of course you don't have that flexibility to zoom in, but still composing a nice square out of a busy landscape is part of the pleasure I have of shooting with this film camera. Of course, we're not stuck with film cameras anymore. We can shoot in all sorts of different aspect ratios. And of course, I do come back to the square. Now, I didn't like the way the light was falling off on the right-hand side there. I felt I'd overcropped it. But I didn't want to add any more height, and I didn't want to add any more width with, well, in a square aspect ratio, you can't add width without adding height. So I made the next choice, which was to go into a four by five. And I think for this particular composition, the four by five is giving me the best of everything. It's, it's showing it's slightly expansive. I'm getting all the content in there that I want. I've got the streaks of the waterfall. I've got the, the, the light shining off the dark water above and a nice flowing diagonal line through the frame. For me, cropping in camera is part of composition. It's why um, it's one of the major decisions that I like to do in camera. Now, of course, we've already discussed that the Nikon camera actually throws away those pixels. If your camera doesn't throw away the pixels, if you're a Canon or a Sony or a Fuji or a Hasselblad shooter, you're fortunate enough that the camera's not throwing away those pixels and therefore, what have you got to lose? Use that aspect ratio in uh, the aspect ratio in camera to allow you to contain the scene to express the way you want to express. I think it's an incredibly powerful tool. Uh, if, as I said, I had the Hasselblad or uh, something else that allows for X-Pan, maybe I might have gone down that particular avenue. I'm just having a wee look. See, I've got rid of quite a lot of that stuff on the top, which I really quite liked, but I do still love the X-Pan. I hope you found this uh, little tutorial to be of value to you. If so, please hit the subscribe button and give us an old thumbs up and dive into the comments. Do you crop in camera or are you someone who just shoots full frame the whole time and makes cropping part of your processing? Either way is fine and I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. I'm just hopefully trying to show you some insights as to why I choose particular things and why I do uh, certain creative choices at certain times of the creative process. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Tune in next week. Uh, there's going to be more express photography coming your way. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this of value. Bye for now.